Okay, we'll uh, open the <coughs> open the Monday, uh, April 10, uh, 2017 meeting of the North Reading School Committee. Uh, and we, as usual, begin with public input. If anybody in the audience has uh, some input that they'd like to uh, uh, What's the matter? have. What's yeah, here. <laughs> Those, these microphones are for the have television. Speak louder, Cliff. Yeah, speak, Cliff, speak up. I'll try not, to speak louder. The room. These aren't, they don't amplify. <laughs> yeah, usually we don't have as large a crowd as this, so I don't have to speak as loud. <laughs> we uh, open with public input. Uh, if anyone has uh, something to say the, that uh, is not on the agenda, something not to do with the agenda, uh, please raise your hand and we'll recognize you. Seeing none, uh, we'll move on. We have no student report this evening. Uh, and we'll move on our, our agenda, move up on to new business, which is the fiscal year 2018 uh, budget public hearing. Uh, and uh, with that, I'll open the hearing. And uh, Mr. Conley, you have something you're going to, oh, I, I guess uh, maybe Superintendent Bernard will. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Just by way of introduction and also um, leading into Mr. Conley's presentation, I would just uh, remind the committee and also for the public's input um, that the school committee held a workshop on March the 23rd. Um, which was really the first opportunity that the committee uh, came together with the administration to workshop um, our recommended budget. Subsequent to that, there was a finance planning team meeting on April 4th. Um, and while there is a, a very good and constructive working relationship between the school department and the town, um, and I thank Mr. Gilberto, the town administrator, who uh, sits on the finance planning team with us um, for his efforts, along with the, the Board of Selectmen and the finance director, to, to try and resolve what is a, um, a pretty significant budget gap from either the recommended budget or the level services budget that, um, that has been presented to the school committee previously. Following that meeting um, on April 4th, uh, we continue to, to have a budget gap that um, is operating on two budgets that we have in front of, in front of the committee. Um, the level services budget, which uh, currently has a gap of $453,067, or the recommended budget, which uh, Mr. Connolly will talk more in more detail about um, what the recommended budget includes in way of, in way of uh, meeting some of our goals of our strategic plan. Um, that gap exists right now at $637,855. So in your packet is, um, is documentation that um, reflects the most recent revenue figures um, that have been the result of the finance planning team working together to try and, um, and match the available revenues of the town with the needs of the school department. And I would just add that, um, and this came up at our last meeting, that the, the municipal side of government also has its own challenges with, a, with an existing budget gap of just under $100,000. So tonight what we have for you is a rather detailed presentation um, that, that outlines the recommended budget and what some of the uh, initiatives are that we're hoping to be able to fund in fiscal year 18, um, as well as some details around the level services budget, which we are classifying as that budget, which would enable us to, uh, to move forward into the 2017-18 school year, fiscal year 18, offering the same level of services um, to the students of the district that we do presently. So with that uh, introduction, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it over to Mr. Connolly for the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Bernard. So as Mr. Bernard just stated, we have about a 20 to 25 minute um, opening presentation. Uh, there are copies of the PowerPoint slide presentation on both sides of the room in the front row here. So feel free to help yourself with a copy of the, the slide presentation. Um, tonight's presentation will cover, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the various revenue sources that make up both school and municipal budgets. We're gonna discuss the key budget drivers of the school budget. We're gonna get into the budget numbers and major expense categories of the budget. Um, we'll discuss some new positions and staffing changes that are reflected in the FY18 budget. We'll look a little bit at the revenue offsets that go into the school budget, and then we will also, as Mr. Bernard just stated, review the current budget gaps and the proposed changes that we um, discussed at the budget workshop on March 23rd that would be reduce the existing budget deficit. Um, and then we'll end by looking at next steps in the budget process and then open it up for questions and discussion. 
So funding sources of the school budget. Um, it's not surprising that the local, local property taxes make up the largest revenue source, which accounts for over 70% of the revenue. State aid, local receipts, fees, and grants make up the remaining revenue sources. These re other remaining revenue sources have remained relatively flat for the last several years, and North Reading has not seen a sizable increase in its state aid for the last several years. So this, when you have revenue sources that are remaining relatively flat, and as you know, local tax revenue is capped at 2.5%, um, and you have fixed costs, um, for example, health insurance, general liability insurance, uh, fixed costs like regional school assessment costs, retirement costs. When you have fixed costs that seem to be rising at a rate almost double that of our available revenues, almost double of between 2 and 2.5% two and on an annual basis, it does present a structural challenge in funding both school and town budgets each year. Um, and fiscal 18 has also presented uh, various uh, budget challenges. There's four key but major budget drivers in fiscal 18 that I wanted to highlight this evening that we've been discussing throughout the process. And the first one is our contractual salary obligations. Salaries represent over 83.4% of our total budget requests. That stat is pretty typical for school budgets, so salary obligations <coughs> are always going to be a major driver of the school budget. These ob obligations include cost of living adjustments, step increases, in some cases lane adjustments, and longevity increases for all eligible staff. The contractual obligations represented 2.9% increase of the school department's total 5% of our recommended budget increase. So certainly a major budget driver in fiscal 18, and it has been in the past. NRPS 2020, 2021 year two is the district strategic plan. So there are 2.9 FTE positions, which total $184,788 um, that are guided by the district's strategic five-year strategic plan. Fiscal 18 would represent year two of that strategic plan. That's a plan that focuses on various strategies, including um, in particular teaching and learning strategies, student support service strategies, and technology integration strategy areas that is put together by the administrative team on an annual basis, and we look, and that is a guiding document for funding new initiatives. I will go into a little bit detail about uh, those 2.9 FTE positions that were included in the recommended budget proposal. The third budget driver is the operational fixed costs. Um, that has presented an, an additional challenge in the development of the fiscal 18 budget, partly driven by the needs of the middle school high school campus. There is a need to adjust facility maintenance line items in FY18 to keep pace with actual expenditures. Uh, for example, the FY18 budget includes adjustments to ensure adequate preventative maintenance measures are in place to uh, maintain the school's HVAC equipment, um, as well as to <coughs> an anticipate necessary increases in our utility costs. Excuse me. The third, the fourth major budget driver is special education out of district costs. So funds needed to support anticipated out of district tuitions and transportations are expected to increase in fiscal 18. The district anticipates a slight increase in the number of students requiring out of district placements and transportation in fiscal 18. This is partly the result of new students that have moved into North Reading. The FY17 budget included out of district placements and transportation costs for a total of 34 students. The FY18 budget anticipates that amount would increase by five students, and the district will have 39 students in out of district placements. The district, as we always do, continues to evaluate the special education programs and where appropriate as reallocated current resources to provide additional student support services, in particular to address increased social and emotional support for students. These programs assist with reducing the potential need for outside placements and special education services. This next chart is actually reflects the budget numbers um, that's reflected in our recommended budget proposal. Thanks. Thank you, John. Um, and I think you can see some of the major budget drivers at play uh, as we as I just highlighted, the four major budget drivers. As you, as you can see, some, these are some of the major changes between fiscal 18 and fiscal 17. 
Salaries are up 4.5%. Um, that's the result of those contractual obligations that I just spoke of. Um, the operations and maintenance line items are up 10%, which again is the result of an increased need um, of operational fixed costs driven by the needs in a lot of ways of the middle school and high school campus, <coughs> as well as necessary utility adjustments. We have our electricity rates that are going up and uh, water rates are going up and so forth, so those line items also need to increase, um, which is the major driver of, of that increase on that, in that cost center. Uh, transportation, um, once again, is always a, a challenge, and if that was the case in fiscal 18, the regular school transportation rates, uh, we experienced an increase for the first time last this current fiscal year, and the rates are going up slightly in fiscal 18, um, as well as the an anticipation of an increase in our district special education co transportation costs um, is resulting in that, that increase in that line item. Michael, just can you clarify, the salaries also include the new positions. Correct, yes. I just want to clarify that. That's not just That's correct. contractual obligations. Thank you, that's correct. So the FY18 budget, I think the major driver of the 4.5% would be the contractual obligations, but this, is, this number reflects our recommended budget, which, as you'll see in a moment, include other staffing increases, the, the NRPS 2021 strategic plan staffing increases, which was the 2.9 FTE positions, as well as some uh, staffing increases as a result of enrollment, maybe the kindergarten program, which I'll highlight. So coupled with the 2.9%, 9% contractual obligation increases that I highlighted earlier is, is why that, that line item is going up about 4.5%. And then the other major drivers, certainly the last two cost centers here, transportation and tuitions, the main driver behind these increases is the out-of-district costs, which uh, certainly are always very difficult uh, to predict. Um, but the FY18 original recommended budget was the budget of 29984968 which was a change of a slightly over greater than $1.4 million over fiscal 17, and that was a 5% budget increase. Um, and that does include all of the new initiatives as part of the NRPS 2021. As Mr. Bernard spoke of earlier, we were, were kind of operating with two budget proposals. Um, the level services budget, which I'll get into in a moment, um, was a budget that was about 4.4% higher than fiscal 17. This pie chart represents the major funding categories of the school budget that we just talked about. And as you can see, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, it's not surprising to see salaries make up the largest portion of the pie at 83.4%. As I stated earlier, that's pretty typical stat in, in school budgets. Um, the next biggest piece, largest piece of the pie is the operations and maintenance expenses at 6.1%. That is up slightly from last year, that, that total percent amount again, driven by those increase in the, those operational costs. Um, the remaining breakdown is very similar to what we've seen in prior years. Um, but as you can see, certainly the largest piece of the pie is the, the salaries at 83.4%. This is an interesting stat that we do kind of pay attention to and, and look at each year. Um, this chart represents our pure pu pupil spending uh, when compared to the state for each major expenditure category as determined by the Department of Education. As you can see, as been the case over the last several years, we continue to be below the state average in, all, in every category shown on the chart. The total per pupil expenditure in North Reading in fiscal 16, which is the most recent fiscal uh, amount of data available, is th was $13,848, and the state average is $14,995. So we are, at, we are over 8% lower than the state average in per pupil spending. So I think it's fair to say that the North Reading School Department continues to provide a high quality education at lower spending levels in, in North Reading when compared to the state. So now I'm gonna, the next couple slides are gonna focus on some of the new staffing positions and staffing changes that I talked a little bit about earlier. Um, the first, uh, chart here is on enrollment driven staffing needs. These were the adjustments along with those contractual salary obligations to the salary line items that were driven by enrollment. So I think it's fair to say that in our original budget request, this 2.5 FTE increase was reflected in our level services budget. And as you can see, it was certainly uh, the major contributing factor to, the, to these increases was 
the enrollment in the full day and half day kindergarten program. Um, so that as we uh, moved through the registration process in the, both the full day and half day kindergarten program, it became evident that in order to provide um, full day kindergarten for every student desiring such, as well as half day, meet the demands of the half day program as well, we were gonna need to increase staffing in this area. Our enrollment was higher than anticipated when we projected enrollment um, a year ago in this program, and it was certainly higher than current levels. So the, the bachelor school in particular um, was warranting an additional <coughs> section. Um, so we would need to add a 1.0 uh, full day kindergarten teacher, as well as a 1.0 full day kindergarten paraprofessional to, to meet the demand of the full day kindergarten program at the bachelor's school. So we added a third section. You can see the projected class sizes on the slide. Um, if we were not to do this, class sizes would have increased well above optimum levels at the kindergarten level to 26 a, a class. The little school, uh, they warranted a <coughs> 0.5 FTE half day kindergarten uh, teacher. Um, that program's enrollment was significantly up from this current year, and if we were not to uh, add the 0.5 half FTE half-day kindergarten teacher at the little school, you would have saw class size at the little reach as high as you know, 26 in, uh, as well. So this was certainly a, a warranted increase. Um, we have discussed and began last year at the little school the, the hybrid model, um, the combined full day and half day day program at the little. Um, the numbers didn't warrant the, 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 the hybrid model at the little school, but we will talk a little bit about later in the presentation. It was discussed at the budget workshop as well, some uh, potential, uh, I, you know, potential hybrid model in the district that we will uh, discuss later in the presentation. The NRPS 2021 positions, as I noted earlier, there was 2.9 FTE positions. Um, the first um, in the <coughs> teaching and learning strategy was a 1.0 academic teacher at the high school level. Um, this academic teacher would help reduce class sizes in both mainly the mathematics and science classes. Currently, 40% of the core course offerings in these two departments have 28 or more students, and reducing class sizes will certainly allow for more personalized instruction. The next three increases all help to uh, enhance the student support services strategy in the NRPS 2021 strategic plan. Um, the 1.0 team chairperson would be at the elementary level. Uh, this would assist the district with providing additional support to elementary students with special needs and allow for enhanced development <coughs> of special education programs and support services that would better meet the needs of students. The 0.4 school psychologist counseling position at the bachelor school this would be an existing uh, personnel that would, at whose FTE would, would increase, wouldn't be a, a, new, a new position or a new staff member. Um, the bachelor school requires additional student support, certainly in the area of testing and counseling. As you know, the bachelor school has the largest population of the three elementary schools in North Reading. The point for FTE increase will allow students to have necessary support to access and participate fully in the general education classroom. The 0.5 FTE reading teacher at the little school would also be an existing uh, staff member that whose FTE would increase, and that this 0.5 increase would allow the school to more fully implement response to intervention strategies, which would allow uh, the school to intervene immediately for students who may be struggling. This would also assist the little school in providing support necessary to students in all grade levels. So all in all, this 2.9 FTE um, positions um, guided by our strategic plan, totaled $184,788. This amount represented about 0.6% uh, increase in the total 5% budget increase of our original recommended budget. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about where things stand, as Mr. Bernard alluded to earlier, and the most recent revenue plan that has been discussed um, at, at the beginning of April, as, as, as recently as April 4th. Um, so the, the administration's original recommendation budget to the school committee was a budget of 29,984,968. That was the 5% budget increase. As of this evening, the available funds 
is $29,362,113. This is the most recent <coughs> up-to-date amount. So the FY18 budget gap, again, over our recommended budget, was is $622,855. The next, this next slide, uh, I'm gonna kind of walk through um, some of the ideas that was discussed at the March 23rd budget workshop. So as you know, the school committee held their budget workshop and at the end of the workshop, um, the administration discussed ideas of how we could try to bridge the gap and reduce the existing budget gap um, between both the recommended budget and then somewhat focusing on level services as well and trying to, trying to reduce that budget gap. So um, as I just stated earlier, the original recommended budget request was the 29, 984, 968 amount. Um, unfortunately, that was one necessary increase that came up around the middle of March. Um, as you know, the school department is, operates a wastewater treatment facility as part of the middle school and high school campus. That's a wastewater treatment facility that was required and is certainly, um, you know, certainly costs money to operate that and, and run the plant. Uh, this was a bid year to, to hire an operator and engineer to operate that plant. And we went out to bid and the most advantageous uh, bid proposal for the operator came in a little bit higher than what we're paying currently. So there was a need to make about a $15,000 adjustment in our operating budget for that line item to, to, so that's, to continue to operate the plant um, of this facility. So the first necessary increase, uh, $15,000, that would be an increase to the budget. Um, the next proposal uh, that we discussed was, you know, the, it would be the administration's recommendation in order to, to balance the budget or get closer to a balanced budget would be to eliminate the, the NRPS 2021 new positions, the 2.9 FTE recommended positions that I just spoke of. Um, so we wouldn't want to reduce any existing staff or existing programs to fund the new initiatives. Um, so that would be, so that $184,788 that would be, was discussed um, to, re, to reduce or eliminate those, those requests. Um, I talked a little bit about the kindergarten model earlier and the, the hybrid model um, and what this, and that's a model that the district has done this year and done, done that well at the little school. Um, the, the numbers at the Hood Elementary School could warrant um, the, the hybrid you know, kindergarten model, the combined half day, full day model from, from operating. Um, the class sizes would still be at appropriate levels to, to run a, a hybrid model at the Hood School. Um, class sizes would be at 22 and 22 in the full day program for half the day and then reduce to about 16 and 17 students for the, for the remaining half of the day for those students enrolled in the full day program. So if we were to make that change, it would um, mean we would not have to hire the additional 0.5 uh, FTE kindergarten teacher that I just spoke of and that would be a savings of $31,860. So those were the two staffing uh, changes or, or ideas that were discussed to reduce the gap. I would just re reiterate, nothing has been adopted yet officially on any of these changes. These are all just recommendations or ideas <coughs> that the administration has proposed to the school committee and discussed for, for consideration and discussion. Uh, the remaining line items, as you can see, um, these aren't any salaries or positions. I think it's fair to say they represent some, some uh, expense line item reductions and some changes to our assumptions. So the district has a small capital and equipment line item to help fund some small capital uh, projects that don't qualify for the large capital plan through the consolidated efforts with the town and the school through the CIPC process um, and equipment line items for some furniture requests, et cetera. So we've had to unfortunately reduce and eliminate that line item over the last few years. It's a small line item of $15,000. <coughs> So this proposal would once again eliminate those line items in fiscal 18. Um, the food service program, I think in one positive aspect, um, the food service program has done a very good job over the last several years um, and be, to become, become very close to a self-sufficient break-even program. There is still a very small general fund subsidy that does exist in the operating budget um, as the program is not quite at break-even, although I think for the first time at the end of this year and looking at projections next year, I think we're fair to say we'd be very, very close to operating a self-sufficient program through a lot of hard work by the staff and director involved in the food service program. 
Um, so this would make a, currently there's a $20,000 general fund subsidy including in the operating budget. This would cut that in half and we would just continue with a $10,000 line item in this area. Um, school district operating budgets, um, you know, unfortunately we've had to reduce our you know, school and district operating budgets. These are the, the budgets at discretionary budgets at the school levels and departments that help fund instructional materials and general supplies and, and professional development opportunities here and there for, for teachers. Um, we've had to kind of level fund these or go back and make some changes and, and, and reductions in this area. So this would be an attempt to, to once again go in and, and look to make some, you know, squeeze those budgets a little bit further uh, between about three and three and a half percent. Um, that would net to about a little over $33,000 of, of reductions. Um, the next two line items are essentially changes to our revenue uh, assumptions and offsets. So uh, the, the school department obviously has a, a variety of revolving accounts that we look to help offset the budget for, the, the transportation revolving account, the money that we charge for um, parents that don't qualify for free busing to, for a bus pass. Um, we would look to um, try to achieve a little more revenue from these two funding areas to help offset the budget gap in the, around $15,000 in the bus revolving account and about $10,000 in the facility rental revolving account. We, we bring in revenue for renting school space, certainly at the middle school and the high school and across all the schools. So it would just be making some changes to our, our, our revenue assumptions, making some reductions to some expense line items and essentially adding a little bit more risk to to our, to our budget would essentially uh, reduce the level services budget by taking the recommended new initiatives and our PS 2021 positions um, by reducing those positions as well. We would, our new level services budget request would be a budget of $29,700,180 here. And that would mean there would be a new revised budget gap after these proposed changes noted above of 338,067. So it gets us certainly much closer, but there certainly would be a lot of work to, to be done to, to continue to bridge the gap to come in with a balanced budget. Um, the next uh, item I just wanted to talk about, I just wanted to highlight a little bit so the community, everyone is aware that obviously we have our general fund, our operating budget, which is the amount that we're the school committee would you know, adopt on May 1st. If the proposed changes I just presented on the prior slide were adopted, and I would say they, they have not been, there's no official action on those proposed changes, we would have an FY18 budget of 29,700,180. That level services budget then uh, would be a little over $1.1 million higher than FY17, and that would be a 4% increase over our fiscal 17 appropriation. Um, now that only tells a little bit, tells part of the story. I just, again, we have a variety of, of offsets in the form of our grants, both state grants and federal grants, as well as the revolving accounts, the, the um, programs that we charge, you know, and assess fees and tuitions for, like preschool and kindergarten and the busing and the athletic. So the re between all revenue sources, there would be another little over $2.7 million of, of funding. So when you look at total school funds, <coughs> Although 29,700,180 may be the operating budget, in reality, the, the total school funds available is a little over $32.4 million when you look at a variety of offsets. Now, you can see we are making some changes to our assumptions that I just spoke of around the bus revolving, facility rental. There are a few others involved as well. And as you can see, those we are taking on a little bit more risk by assuming those revenue offsets would go up by 187,000 in fiscal 18 to help try to balance and you know, balance the budget. Um, and again, I will say that there is still a whole other piece of, of revenue that comes in and the school committee uh, accepts a variety of donations uh, throughout the fiscal year. It's very, very impressive at the end of each meeting to see the amount of donations the school committee has been accepting. And if you look at our annual average over the last two or three years, where we've done a much better job in collecting this data and recognizing the various uh, <coughs> private donors and support organizations that are donating funds to the district for a variety of purposes, that's about an average $175,000. And then to really tell the full picture of all the funds that go into a school department budget to make the experience 
what it is for the North Reading student that we're certainly have come to be very proud of. The school, the PTOs, have their in-kind donations as well, and they have their budgets that help support um, supplies and enrichment activities and a variety of other classroom projects and field trips and so forth, and their budgets on average total about $75,000. So we are uh, extremely appreciative of, um, of the support of these organizations and recognize that um, you know, we could not certainly make the educational experience what it is today without their support. Um, I did want to highlight before I get into the last couple slides here, um, a little bit about the things that we are doing to contain our costs. Um, so, you know, first of all, school and district expense budgets. We do look to um, aggressively procure all of our supplies and services, and a lot of that, most of the times, that does include purchasing from state bid lists. That means we're getting the largest educational dis discount that is available. Um, from our utilities, our occupancy schedules, natural gas and electricity, we certainly work to modulate the boilers and set the occupancy schedules and lighting controls to regulate our usage of electricity and gas. And we look to, we participate in a power options purchasing consortium for our gas rates and we watch the market closely and we've done a very good job at locking in our gas rates at very optimum times to save costs. And I think that's certainly been a highlight and a, a cost avoidance and a cost saver over the last several years and it continues to be uh, as we look to fiscal 18. With special education, uh, we have a commitment to customized programs um, and to keeping students in our schools through the design of customized programming. And I think we continue to look at this and do a very good job at um, designing programs to, to certainly accomplish and achieve this end. Uh, we also participate in the SEAM Collaborative's shared transportation model. Participation in this shared transportation model means that students that are being transported to placements outside the district. We, uh, North Reading students may be on the same vans and so forth with other participating sending districts in, as part of SEAM Collaborative, so the 12 area districts in this area. So when that is the case, we achieve a, an economies of scale and a discount when we can um, share our transportation costs with the other SEAM, SEAM districts. And we have done some analysis on this over the past couple, several years, and we think that's a cost avoidance anywhere between 50 and $75,000 by, by participating in that program. Um, I talked a little bit about it earlier, but I just think it deserves mentioning again, the food service program. Um, you saw a recommendation to reduce that offset that would not have been possible you know, three or four years ago. So I can't re really say enough about the hard work of the, of the workers in the food service program and the food service associates to control our, our costs and, and mainly to increase participation and this has led to a significant reduction in the general fund budget subsidy over the last few years. I mean, it's been essentially been cut in half almost every year over the last five years. Um, and, you know, the last, we just constantly are looking at, you know, efficiencies, reviewing every budget line items and our constant vigilance with respect to our daily operations. That's just an ongoing effort by the part of every administrator and, and school department employee. So when we look to what are our kind of conclusions of a revised level services budget? Um, so if we were to adopt some of the changes and the reductions that we spoke of this evening and you know, what, what would the FY18 budget conclude and what would, would be achieving, it would certainly allow the district to meet, again, contractual obligations with employees and employee unions. So that is a necessity. We certainly need to do that. We would include some additional staffing to achieve full day kidding, kindergarten for those families desiring such. So we've certainly made a commitment to um, provide full day kindergarten for each and every family that wants, wants full day kindergarten uh, in their home district. And the, the increases in, in uh, level services increases I spoke of in the full day kindergarten program would achieve that, that goal. Um, it would uh, provide the associated cost to properly operate and maintain the middle school and high school campus. So there's certainly I think it's just fair to say we've learned a lot being um, in this campus over the last, this is like the, the third, I believe the third, or the second full year this campus has been in operation, the third year if you include the high school. And we have certainly come to appreciate and learn a lot about what uh, the maintenance needs are in this building, what the utility usage is going to be. And, and I think we have are in a good place to know uh, what needs to be done. And we feel strongly that 
certain preventative maintenance measures need to be in place to protect the investment that the community and town has made to build this beautiful state-of-the-art you know, complex that we're all enjoying this evening and continuing to enjoy. And some of these line item adjustments that we've, make, that we've made, although it's presented some of a budget challenge as we look to fiscal 18, it would certainly would achieve that end and we think it would save us uh, certainly funds into the future to protect the, the useful life of this equipment um, in this building as well as throughout the district. Um, it includes the associated cost to meet the academic and social and emotional needs of all students. Um, we continue to provide a comprehensive ed educational experience for all students. And the budget would certainly allow the district to maintain level services while taking on some additional financial risk. So I think that is fair to say. It's kind of, an, um, you can saw some of the uh, change in assumptions we're making to some of those revenue offsets and again, squeezing those expense budgets. There's, with every budget, there's some inherent risk and I think that's fair to say that over the last couple of years, um, as we've looked to um, you know, balance the budget in some difficult fiscal times, there is some additional financial risk there as well. In terms of next steps, our, we're gonna have, continue to have ongoing discussions with the finance planning team of our available revenues. Again, the present level services gap, I'll just highlight uh, as I would be 338.067 if some of these changes were to be adopted. Um, so that, again, there's still work to do, but I can't say enough about the work of the finance planning team and Michael Gilberto, the town administrators here this evening, and Bob Masseri, uh, the chair of the, the board of selectmen, I know could not be here this evening, but the work of the chairs and vice chairs on the finance planning team do as they meet almost every other week over the last several months to try to put our heads together to work collaboratively um, to try to uh, achieve balance both town and school budgets and that effort will certainly continue as we look towards town meeting in June. Um, school, there will be another school committee budget workshop on April 24th so I think what we're looking to do is receive some feedback and some questions and discussion by each of the members of the community and so forth this evening and then the school committee will reconvene on April 24th and look to make some hard decisions and discuss the budget again. Uh, we're due to present the, the budget to the finance committee on April 26th and then the school committee will come back together um, on May 1st in this room at 6.30 p.m. and that will be the evening that we will vote an operating budget for fiscal 18 to put forward towards town meeting. Town meeting is on June 5th. We continue to await state budget action. So again, this, this, the state uh, budget process is still kind of early on in, in that process. Believe it or not, the, the, the governor obviously has released his budget, but it's moving through the House Ways and Means uh, this month, and we'll move it on you know, to the Senate and so forth next month. So we are hopeful that there could be some additional state aid coming as it moves through that process. Um, but again, it's, it's certainly an unknown at this point in time. And then we'll continue to take feedback and discuss the budget like we are this evening. So with that being said, I'll, I'll turn it over to um, you know, the Chairman Bowers and open it up to you. We'd be happy to uh, hear your, your uh, comments or your, your questions. I would uh, ask you to please use the microphone. The, if you just push the button on the main panel there, in the microphone will light up and uh, we'll all be able to hear you. Could you also, if uh, that microphone's for cable, so if you can move that around to whoever's speaking. Um, Cliff, can you, would the committee allow some comments for us before we take public comments, or? Sure, you're, you're one of the public, you can uh, speak. <laughs> I just wanted to address a couple of things, and I think it's important every year to explain level services, because it, it seems to be a confusing term. It's level services doesn't mean level spending. Level services means if we as a school district, our philosophy or our goal or our requirement is to offer full day K, for example, to every family who wants full day K for their child, and to offer, as we're legally bound to offer, half day K. If we have 50 students this year and 100 next year, that means we're gonna have to hire two, three, four people in order to offer the same level of services. So because it's level services doesn't mean you don't hire new staff. We're not gonna put 25, 30 students in a kindergarten classroom. <coughs> and this year, it didn't go from 50 to 100, but it's gone up fairly significantly, which is why you saw the, uh, <coughs> the increase. Another example would be special education. Students uh, in a fifth grade class are in a special program that's moving up to middle school we might not have that program at the middle school. 
that program has to follow the students. We have to hire the staff. So you say, oh, then you just get rid of the program in that elementary school. No, because there are students from the fourth grade moving up to the fifth grade in the same kind of program. So again, you have to hire additional staff to provide the same level of services that we're providing this year. So level services does not mean level spending. And, and the biggest driver in level services okay. is your contractual obligation. Right. So by definition, you're gonna increase your level services budget without doing anything else by pro two to three percent. Two to three percent, right off the top, because eighty, I think uh, Michael said eighty three point three point four percent of our budget <coughs> is staffing is personnel. So again, if we give contractual raises, cola raises, and then the step raises, which one third of our teachers are on step raises, then we're going to increase the uh, the budget for the next fiscal year. Just doing what we're doing now, maintaining level services, providing the same thing that we did today, next year, it's going to be two to three percent automatically. Yeah. Never mind the other uh, right. budget drivers that Michael talked about, and that's why it gets up to four and yeah. a half to five percent. Right. Yeah, between contractual salary ob obligations, which was again the major driver, at two point nine percent, and then making the necessary operational fixed cost adjustments just to fund utility increases with electricity, gas, water rates going up, analyzing usage over three to five year trends, and so forth, and then. Um, trying to increase some of these maintenance line items to adequately maintain you know, uh, all, all schools as well as this campus. The wastewater treatment facility was an added cost a few years ago, trying to maintain that, that plant and operate it well. Um, and then certainly addressing the needs of special education. A lot of, in most cases, a lot of cases are driven by our you know, state mandates and things where we want to and you know, we need to provide and obviously and look to do, to do those types of things as well. Right there, you're, you're looking at almost 4% increase of the budget as well, and we have a level services budget right around 4.2% increase. And probably for the last five years, we've basically fought to maintain a level services budget. Oh, we settled for a level services budget, really, because the, avail the revenues weren't available. There's two other, thing, two other things I want to add. I, I would um, be 100% against reducing the added position at the high school. The high school has suffered for way too long with way too high class sizes. Honestly, we should be adding three staff at the high school, not one. Uh, we have, as, as Michael said, 40% of our science and math classes, the core classes with 28 or more students. That's not, that's not ideal. It's not what we should be doing. Um, our foreign language program continues to be meager. It's an embarrassment. We have two languages. We don't start until seventh grade. And the seventh grade is an experimental where the kids go a couple times a week. So honestly, it's, we don't really start till the eighth grade. We should have many more languages. About six years ago, we adopted uh, Mandarin uh, Chinese. We've never funded the budget. It's part of our goal every year. Budget season every single year is to expand the foreign language program. That's a unanimous amongst the committee here. And it's not even on the recommended budget this year. So it's not, not only is it level services, obviously, it's not even in the recommended budget. It's in the budget that exceeds that. It has already been cut. Yes. This is my ninth <laughs> budget hearing, mm -hmm. and they've all been the same. We never have enough money. And we always end up by going with a, a, a short amount and less, less staffing and less uh, component than we'd like to have. And it's very, very frustrating. Uh, and I'm sure on the other side of it, you're all looking out there as taxpayers and you're saying, it's frustrating on this end too, but these people here are all taxpayers as well. The last thing I'll say is the, um, there was a new position which is a team chairperson for K through five, um, which would be involved with special education. To me, that position is critical. About a month ago, the Supreme Court made a decision related to what level of services that school districts are required to offer students, either in the district or out of district. It mainly, it mainly focused on in district. And they overturned a ruling that said school districts could basically offer minimus level education. In other words, the kid comes to school, kid goes home. There's no measurement of, of improvement or success. Supreme Court says that's not allowed anymore. I'm not saying we do that in North Reading, but what I am saying to you is that there may be more parents saying, I think my child should get a better education. I think my child should be out of district. I think my child should have a stronger IEP with more specialists in district. If that happens, we're gonna be on the hook to provide that. This position, working with Cynthia Conant, our Director of Pupil Personnel Services, and the other special ed staff, hopefully will help to contain those issues before they develop, to make sure that students in K through five have better 
uh, IEPs, stronger IEPs, and we're seeing progress in their education. So, so I would be against uh, not adding that position. I'm 100% against cutting the new uh, teacher position at the um, high school, and I don't see any other way to provide level services at the kindergarten level without adding the staff that Michael uh, talked about up there. And, and back to foreign language, our goal this year was to start introducing it at sixth grade. Foreign language should start in the first grade, and we don't start till really the eighth. We have an exploratory thing in the seventh, and that, that's not going anywhere again. And our goal is also to add more languages besides Spanish and, and there's German. A real, there's a real demand for further foreign language right. education. We've offered a program, I think, John, a, a pay program. This, this oh, year for exactly. the first time, yeah, Global it's Child. It's overwhelming how many students, uh, how many? I think 250. You know, hundreds, yeah. 250 students are paying for, is it mostly preschool or is it pre and post? Uh, it runs as, it's gone as high as the middle school. No, but I'm mean, talking about oh. before school and after school. Oh, yes, or elementary. And, and it shows that there's a demand for foreign language that we're not, we're not meeting as a district. And, you know, maybe people can afford that. They can pay and they can have their students take those classes. It should be part of the education program, not something that is kind of a, um, you know, you go down the aisle and I'll pick one of these and one of these and one of these. And that, that's, what, that's what public education is becoming anyway when you see all the fees you pay. It's becoming an a la carte service where you pick what you can afford and then, and it's, it's just sad, but it, it's no fault of the town. The town has, you know, the revenue struggles. Um, the biggest fault is the state. The state improperly has funded public education for at least 20 years. It's about $1.4 billion short of what it should be funding education in this state. That was last year, it's probably higher. Um, I was talking to Julie earlier, and I think the House is making some noises that they may fund um, they may send us more funds to help us pay for uh, uh, health insurance and special education. The health insurance would come off the top, which would need more money for both the town and the schools because there's a split on that money. And then special education would come straight to the school district. But as Michael said, that's a long way down the line. We don't know. They will the phase it in over the next few years. Right. So that's just, I just wanted to add those, yeah. add those points. All right. Any, any further? Janine, Julie, okay. Now we want to hear from you. Um, please raise your hand if you want to speak and, yes sir. Folks, use those mics too because they won't be able to hear you on TV. This mic right here especially, this one. Uh, there's, not, there's two of them out there. Okay. We, we want you to use two mics. Good evening. Uh, Scott Buckley, 5 Alden Street. So I agree with Mr. Webster but this, this presentation began tonight with talking about where the revenues come from and then the second slide talks about what the budget drivers are. I, I think every year we talk about that and I think something has to be done to address the drivers. And I, 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 I applaud the selectmen this year because for health insurance, they went out and they're trying a new way to get health insurance, which is going to save money over if we had just taken the first proposal. And I think, as Mr. Webster said, the, the team chairperson at the elementary was specifically designed to try to save cost. It won't save it for 2018 because you need to invest in that, but you need to build the programs. One of the identified drivers was out of district cost. It's 2.9 million next year. It's higher than the state average. We have a higher percentage of students that are leaving the school district and it, it's only going to get worse. And we have zero dollars in tuition from out of districts, other districts coming here. And it's something that will pay for itself in the years to come. And I think every year we talk about we don't have enough money to do it. We have to find that $63,000 to build a program, identify some of those students that have, start with the easiest programs to build here. But when we're sending people, when we're sending people just to Reading or other local districts, it's money that we're wasting year after year. And the second point, which I don't think can be funded this year, but again, is to try to work on class size. I know that this committee has has dedicated to try to get the class size down, but still, uh, the, the average class size in North Reading is higher than the state average and higher than almost all of our peer communities. Anyone yeah, I, just, I don't know if it's just important to note on that on that end that I think the district, as I mentioned in the presentation, does 
you know, work very, very hard to design those customized those special education in district programs to where appropriate, you know, obviously educate students in district. And, you know, we are very close to the state average numbers in terms of the out of district special education spending. I think we're about a half a percent higher. Um, when you look at the state averages, both in our out of district spending, special education, as well as in our in district uh, spending as well. And I think it's, you know, I let, I may let Ms. Conant um, co comment as well. But I think it's fair to say that through the design of those programs, we, we've, we've certainly done a good job keeping educating students in the district as well. Absolutely. I think that this year in particular is a good example of what can be done. Talking that way. Sorry. <laughs> Using both. <laughs> um, this year, we were able to successfully have eight students remain in district. So we did that by, as Mr. Webster had mentioned, transitioning programs. The cost savings associated with those eight students is approximately $350,000. So really taking the time to focus on programming can have huge financial cost savings to the district. So as was mentioned earlier, that's really the goal with thinking about having the elementary team chair come in so that then our current elementary coordinator can refocus and shift her priority onto programming looking at our current in-district programs, how can we enhance those programs, and also having the opportunity to collaborate with our out-of-district coordinator to be able to say, do we have students out of district that we can design programs to bring them back? And eventually, um, as Mr. Buckley mentioned, hopefully the goal is we could get to a point where we are offering really solid, consistent, high-quality programming, and we can look at the possibility of tuitioning other students in. So I, and again, we're in agreement with Mr. Buckley, I think, uh, as far as the coordinator and the class size issue. I mean, we're, we're in agreement with both of those issues. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Kind of just hold on, because they can't hear you on TV if you don't. Yeah. You're on television. <laughs> You're on television right now. All right. So I was just. Doesn't work. Wow, double mic and still no sound. No. <laughs> Is it, can you? Press what do I do? Is it not I can shout louder. It just, that help? It, once it turns to, I think it read from white to red, Siobhan. It's not working. Just touch it. it just, you don't really press it so much. It's, it's not working. Nothing. All right. Okay. Just I think it hit you then. Just yell. Okay. Um, so I, I was just looking at the kindergarten um, slide, and it reflects, you know, roughly for the addition. Um, of the full day, the full day kindergarten teacher and the paraprofessional, uh, net cost of like ninety one to ninety two thousand. Where is the tuition from these families reflected? Because at forty two hundred per kid, that's about seventy one thousand yeah. for that classroom. So it's really just a net cost of twenty grand. Right. Yeah. So there is an increase in the full day kindergarten uh, revenue offset as well to help. Uh, as a result of um, this additional enrollment as well. It's not, you're right, it's not covering the full cost, but it's, it's covering pretty close to maybe half, half that cost. Michael, why don't you go to that last slide that shows the grants and the offsets, because it would be in there, right? Yeah, so that okay. is... Um, or the next to last slide, whatever it was. Let's say this one here. So in that $187,000 increase, um, that's reflected, um, I believe it's about $70,000, you're right, is the full day kindergarten program. So um, you're right, so it's, it's an FTE increase, but because of the kindergarten tuition offset, it's, it's not you know, a full budget impact because of that increase. Okay, and then a second real quick question. I've, I've followed a little bit of the news about um, the vocational school in uh, Wakefield, uh, Metro, Northeast Metro Tech. Uh, the fact that they need a new building, it hasn't been touched since 1970, um, and there's 12 communities splitting the remaining costs. If the project is approved, say in 2018 for construction moving forward, you know, just looking at basic division, that's, in the, that's five million coming from North Reading, no. if that if they divide it the evenly, formula doesn't work that way. No. Yeah. It'll be it less doesn't. It'll be based okay. on, based on the number of students, and we I think we send the fewest students of any, or, or of any school in the district. We sent what do we have? Thirty something there right now. 30, uh, 30, 34 students. And what's the total population of that school? Um, well over two. Is it over two thousand? Uh, I wouldn't say. That. I think it said fourteen hundred in the twelve hundred. So we, we have a very small population. So it there. does. So it's a, a, it's balanced yeah. by anticipated utilization. It'll be a significant MSBA mm -hmm. 
reimbursement for that project as well. Probably yep. up, I'm going to guess, in the 60 percent. I think um, it might be more than that. I think it was 71 percent or yeah. something that they yeah. quoted. I'm just so my my basic question is, you know, predicting that that might be true in the upcoming years. Does that come out of this discussed budget, or is there another? It comes off the top. Mm -hmm. Comes off. This. Okay. It, so there's cool. off the top costs. There's um, health, health care. There's retirements, et cetera. So all of that is taken off before the money is then allocated to the town and the school sides. So whatever's left after that is what's left for the for the operating budgets. So that does okay. reduce the overall operating so it, budget, yeah, both the town and the in the schools yeah. when right. that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. I know it's minutia, but I'm. No, that's good. Thanks. Thanks. This is yours. This is Castro. Um, Deanna Castro, Nine Brideway. Um, were the assumptions and budget that were presented tonight, did it include any of the information that Brad Jones released today about the house budget? It did not, yeah. any possible additional revenues? I think it would be $10 per student that I saw on yeah. Chapter 70, which would be $26,000. It's not reflected in the presentation. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not. So what's reflected in the presentation in terms of the revenue numbers was the governor's budget proposal, okay. which was funding Chapter 70 um, at an additional $20 per pupil. How was it? Minimum of Yeah, to 30 right? Yeah, so if that increase would be proposed, then that would be, that would be on additional revenue, but um, around 20 Five hundred times additional ten dollars per 50. student, yeah. And that's it. Was there any other discussion that you've had regarding any of the unfunded or underfunded mandates? Um, they remain underfunded. They, yeah. yeah. So I mean, we we've certainly talked about this, you know, in the past, and we've spent uh, you know the last few years trying to do a good job and as best we can working with the administrative team and so forth to try to determine that the, the true financial impact of um, the unfunded state mandates and there's some information on our website if you go to the budget section that actually goes through the study that was done. Um, it started a few years ago, it was updated last year about just the, the challenge of many of these state mandates, many of which are unfunded or not fully, fully funded in, in, a, in a lot of cases. And um, you know, I think in a lot of cases, we would be doing many of these mandates kind of anyway to properly educate the students, but it certainly provides an extra challenge in looking to, to fund, um, you know, certainly school budgets. And, um, you know, in a lot of cases, you know, the costs that are, that are geared towards, you know, the, the state mandates for the, the variety of, of areas um, is an opportunity cost for staff that spend their time kind of compliant to these mandates with auditing, reporting, um, and there's time that they takes them away from actually, you know, the education of the students. So it's, it's certainly an additional challenge. I think we've put a dollar figure on it in the past, although it's, you know, it's, it's some of it's hard to put a not concrete dollar amount on of around, you know, between around $9 million of, of um, unfunded or state mandates that we have to allocate funds for. So it's certainly a challenge. Cliff? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Mr. Webster. I, I think, um, you know, this isn't something we can that's going to help us this year or next year or maybe even the year after but i think the town uh, the board of selectmen the, the town administrator are moving in a really good direction with this pulte homes project over at the um very property that's not built on now if they built all of those units they deliver approximately three million dollars annually in taxes now we're not going to recognize that probably for four or five years but as they build them as they come online we start recognizing that that tax money. The other good things I'm hearing from the town is that they want to take that money and reinvest it in infrastructure. They want to get sewer, especially on Concord Street. If you put sewer on Concord Street, the people that own those trucking terminals are going to say, we don't want trucking terminals here anymore. We're going to be able to sell this property for a heck of a lot more now because we have a sewer line running here. We might be able to put a hotel in here. We might be able to put a little shopping center in here. We might be able to put a restaurant in here. There was a hotel proposed many years ago for that down there where they built this, that self-storage space in the U-Haul place on Concord Street. It was never built because they came in and they said, wait, we don't have any sewer. How are we going to build a hotel here? So I see really positive things happening on the town side. And, and again, it's going to take two, three, four years. We're challenged here. We don't have a retail and industrial base. We, we have about, I don't know, 10, 12 percent of our of our tax base is retail and industrial retail and commercial 
and 88% is residents. So if taxes go up, there's pretty much only one group that's gonna be paying it, and that's the residents. And I think that the moves that the selectmen are making and the CPC and you know, the town administrator hopefully are gonna help that moving forward. It's not gonna help us next year or the year after, but moving forward. And I said it at the town meeting, I'll say it again, the Board of Selectmen the town administrator deserve a tremendous amount of credit for what they did. I think people take it for granted. They seized an opportunity over there to, to get make a deal on that property, and it's going to benefit this community for, for years and years to come. So I, I just hope they get applauded for that because that was a major, major, along with hooking up with the MWRA, accomplishment for the town <coughs> selectmen this year, really. Okay. Mrs. Capizzuto. Oh, just this woman up the back here, so. Yes, I know. Yeah, just oh, do this. Is that working? All right, Laura Capizzuto, 12 Dwayne Drive. I should say Loretta Capizzuto, 12 Dwayne Drive. I just have a quick question, Michael, on uh, the new NRPS 2021 positions, if you could go back to that. Just a point of clarification on student services, the 1.0 team chairperson. Is that, a, that's a teacher? No. Correct. He, and level it's not that it's, it would be in the teaching position. contract. Okay, and elementary. So ex explain for the benefit, I think, for the group, what that entails. Or maybe Cynthia, maybe you could. Responsibilities, exactly. meetings for students at the elementary level. So what that would do to our current structure is right now, that responsibility sits with our elementary coordinator. So by delegating that to the team chair, our coordinator is then able to refocus her scope and responsibility to the programming piece. So the team chair would be facilitating initial and reevaluation team meetings for the, all the elementary schools. Please. I just I, to extend the conversation a little bit around the NRPS 2021 position so there, there were a number of other positions that uh, the Mandarin being one that was spoken about a few minutes ago that the administration made the decision to bring forward only though understanding the financial challenges that the town is facing right now there were those positions that we felt uh, among the list that were our highest priorities. And those are the ones that are reflected in the, in the chart that Michael spoke about, the, the school psychologist at the Batchelder School, the reading teacher at the little school, the additional teacher at the high school, and the special education team chairperson. The reason that this position in particular was, uh, although it's not the only one, was identified among our highest priorities is because not only do we see this, having a, this position having a critical role in doing the right thing for children, we saw it as a position that could potentially and would likely um, realize some savings. So I don't want to lose sight of the fact that there were a number of other initiatives that our strategic plan, when it was unveiled in 2015, to start in 2016, the five-year plan. Um, there were a lot of other things that, um, as, a, as an administration and as a district, that we felt we wanted to undertake and we wanted to do uh, in year two of that plan, fiscal year 2018. But we made the decision and we thought it was the responsible one to make, understanding that the town is in some real financial straits that we would we would hold off on some of those other positions, but elevate these four um, for fiscal year 2018 for the reason that I stated. Lady way up in the back by the your cam guy. express my concern for our facility management people and I want to say how much I thank them all for all the hard work they do and I'm concerned for their jobs as I as they're here tonight and all of my guys from my school are here I am at the middle school and I am at the hood school so they do so much work anyone who can take care of all the sickness in the guck that goes on in both of our schools deserves so much respect so I come to you all of you and I ask what's going on with their jobs and how we're going to go on with this situation because it hasn't been addressed tonight so if you can if you can tell me what's going on I know it's going out for bid 
that's, that was in the paper. So if someone can address I, that. I think it shouldn't get ahead of itself. And I think Mr. Bernard can explain this. But I think, again, in looking at the budget situation that we have year after year after year, I think that we have a responsibility to sometimes try to think out of the box and look at efficiencies that might be out there. I think this thing got, got a little bit away from us. Oh, absolutely. Um, but, well, again, I'm not being defensive about it. Oh, I know. I think we have a responsibility, again, to look at opportunities to try to save money to put it back into the educational plan for our students. Um, but I, I think that the fact that we're looking at these types of opportunities or exploring these types of things doesn't mean necessarily we're going to do it. But I think the administration has a responsibility, and I think the school committee has a responsibility, to at least try to do some of these things. I mean, I, I appreciate these guys as much as anybody. I've worked with these guys on the Batchelder project, on the middle school, high school project. I think they do great work, and I don't think that's really the issue. I think the issue is trying to take a look around, and you're going to see this in years to come. You're going to see outsourcing. You're going to see regionalization. You're going to have to. We can't do this every single year. I mean, we're hanging on, and the reason we're hanging on, it goes all the way back 12 or 15 years. We had an override in 2003. We had the ARA funds from President Obama for three years well beyond that. We've exhausted every single revolving account that we have available to us. You know, the town has been pretty generous with us in trying to fund us for the last few years. So at some point, we can't raise our fees anymore. <coughs> We've got the highest or one of the highest kindergarten fees uh, in the state. Athletic. We're right at the top with the athletic fees. So Lessons. at some point, you have to explore other options. And that's what I think the administration's doing. But I'll, I'll let I, Mr. Bernard. You're going to let the chair talk about this a yeah. little bit. Go Mr. Bernard, will you have a No, I, I would just add that um, the decision, and I'll take full responsibility for it. It was my going to the school committee and expressing to them my deep concern that as the budget process development unfolded um, and the available revenues presented to us matched against what we wanted to do and what we needed to do um, was so significant and we were getting to a point you know here it is now April that um, I was trying to think outside of the box it sounds trite but that's the truth I we have spent countless hours going through this as an administrative team and looking every possible place that we could look to try to identify revenues that we thought might help contribute to closing the budget gap. But I came to a point, and again, I take full responsibility. It was my request to the school committee to let, to let me work with Michael Connolly to put out specifications for requests for bid. And there was a certain level of reluctance, quite honestly, to do that because we understand, and I'll, and I'll say it in publicly, that I'm fully aware of the emotions that come into play with, um, with a decision such as this. But I think you see the, the information tonight, and it's just, I think we're at a place now where we're not talking about people's jobs, clearly. I've done my best to communicate that to the affected staff, but we are seeking data. We are trying to get information to see is there even a cost savings potential here? And I won't know that until early May. The reason it was put on the schedule that it was, was in, if, if, if we are to make any decisions around the budget, the time is approaching when that needs to happen. The school committee is scheduled to take a vote on a budget May 1st. The town meeting is June 5th. It was necessary to get that information on a rather fast track. Um, when I finally came to the conclusion that I thought we had exhausted all other options on where we might um, we might save money to, to close the budget gap. And I will tell you that the thing, there are things that are not being talked about publicly um, for reasons that are, will be pretty obvious because there is a time and a place for talking about what those um, additional cost saving measures might be. But the school committee needed to workshop the budget. They needed to hear from the public tonight and they have another budget workshop scheduled on, on April 24th to hash that out. We will be prepared to talk about those other ideas, but we're not at a place where we, we thought it was prudent to do that tonight because part of this information gathering will, will be reflected in our decisions. Thank you. Okay. And, I, and I would just add, I've worked here a long time. I have a tremendous amount of respect. I'll use your word for the guck that these people put up with. And I, I tell them that every summer when I meet with them as a staff, that they do the, the jobs very often that not a lot of other people want to do in weather conditions that none of us either want to be in a school or outside in, whether it's hot or cold. But the reality of this is this was truly driven by um, the financial situation and nothing else. I, I want to add, I have a terrible fo poker face and I tend to show my cards. Um, first of all, John is 100% correct. I'd say there were more than serious misgivings in the room when he told us 
asked us about doing it. Um, if I was voting today, I'd vote against it. If I was probably voting when the money, money numbers come, when the numbers come back, I'd vote against it. We did the same thing, I think it was three or four years ago, and I saw some people in the audience who were involved with this, with the food service workers. I sat on that committee, John sat on that committee, and I, Michael, were you on that committee? I wasn't, yes. We had a subcommittee, there were, we could have saved money, I was against it 100%, and we didn't approve it. I understand, I think it's, I think it's the responsible thing to do to get bids to see what services are going for, but I personally, at this point, don't support outsourcing any services at the school. But you know, that's my that's that's my personal position. Everybody tells us to try to run the, the town as more a like a business, and this is some of the things right. that businesses would look at. And again, I support these guys 100 percent, but I also appreciate the fact that the administration's out there trying to find solutions. And um, I'm not saying I, people don't <coughs> understand that. In addition to every single municipal employee's salary. Add $15,000 on top of that for benefits, for health insurance, for retirement. So that's $15,000 for every single employee, pretty much every single employee that works for the town. And, and again, we're not trying to eliminate jobs. We're trying to find some cost efficiencies. We have to start looking around, because otherwise, this trend doesn't seem like it's stopping. You know, every year we talk about, uh, at finance planning, a three-year plan. A three-year plan, we've got to get through the next 12 months, and you know, then we worry about the next 12 months after that. So again, I. I, I think the administration was, was had good intentions, um, and I'm certainly not going to discourage them for looking at these types of things in the future. I agree with Mel. It'd have to be one hell of a savings uh, for us to c even consider it, because quite frankly, when you outsource these types of things, there may be a monetary savings, but boy, you're not going to get the quality of work and the pride in the work that these guys give you every single day. These, these guys, these guys are proud of their buildings. <laughs> Again, we're, we're fast approaching desperate times as to how we're going to keep this thing going. <coughs> the reality is that right now we're approximately a half a million dollars short between what we've got as a must-do budget and the revenue. And that's, that's where we're at. That's we're, a tread what? We're short right. half a million bucks. And as far as I can see, there isn't a way of getting there from here. And we can't have that situation on May 1. We have to figure out how to, how to resolve it. And that, that's reality. Um, it's not a nice place to be. We seem to be here every year. As I said, this is my ninth. And, there, and we've, we've always been in the shortfall, but somehow we've managed to find a way just to be able to get by. Uh, it, it's not a happy picture. The town administrator said, did you find any extra money since Friday when we met? <laughs> I think we identified $24,000. All right, thank you. Mrs. Bailey. Thank you. Marcy Bailey, 21 Duane Drive. Um, some of this has been alluded to as a result of the last question. But um, I have two questions. One, in the NRPS 2021 plan, if you were to institute the items in this budget, are there any natural follow-ups that you feel have to come next year or to build on this, or we don't get the full benefit of this $184,000 in, pos in positions? So that's one question. And the second question, I know, Mr. Bernard, you can't speak in specifics, but you, can you tell us in maybe some broad ways if you don't close the um, minimum $338,000 budget gap, because that's kind of you know what you've identified that you you can possibly do um, to say it's not without pain wouldn't be accurate, but that you can possibly do now. If you have to go deeper, can you speak in broad strokes of what kind of things you'd need to do? Because I think if the audience here do not like what what we hear, and I don't think we will. Um, the time is now to contact Brad Jones and Bruce Tarr and make it clear that, you know, this is unacceptable. But I think we need an understanding of what this means. So if you could address those two. Sure. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. So the first question around the, the strategic plan, I think we have kind of grown accustomed to, um, to deferring some of our initiatives each year because to some degree um, the strategic plan 
gives us a blueprint of where we want to be at the end of its five years. So with NRPS 2021, we set a, we set a path on where we want to be as a school district and what, what are the things that we want to have accomplished over those prior five years. But we do that, I think, with our eyes wide open as an administrative team, understanding that we, we aren't likely to get everything that we would want over the course of the five years. So each year when we, do, we come together in the summer as a group and we do our updates annually um, to the strategic plan, we are often finding ourselves in a position where we might say, well, you know what, we may put that off for another year and we might identify a priority. So when you ask me, are there things that I might see us building off of each year, I think the answer is, is a likely yes. Okay. It doesn't mean that things go away year to year. We might just we might be deferring things, which makes the next year's um, list of of prioritized positions that much that much longer. To the second question, I'm really not in a position to talk in in even broad terms about where those uh, reductions might come because I haven't had an opportunity to to sit with the school committee and workshop that. So I think it would be almost irresponsible of me to to do that without having that conversation with, with the committee. What I can tell you is um, I have spent countless hours with a good number of people working diligently to try and identify um, reductions that we could make that would minimize an impact to a classroom, would um, avoid or minimize an impact to personnel. And I think I am at a place now where I can no longer see uh, not affecting those two things with re reductions that I might be identifying and thus re recommending to the school committee. You know, the, the budget is made up largely of, of salaries, and those salaries translate to people in jobs. Um, we have been on a shoestring operating budget for a number of years. Um, we've, we've made reductions to or level funded operating budgets for a number of years. Um, when I was the high school principal, there were years when the superintendent invoked um, a, a freeze to operating budgets at the five schools and at the district level. Um, we come to expect that now. When I became the superintendent three years ago, um, I've enacted a freeze every year, and it's happening earlier and earlier. Our operating budgets start on July 1, and I'm sitting with the administrative council in October, maybe November and asking them to, to freeze their expend, expenditures through their operating budget because I become alarmed at what the future might hold. It could be an unanticipated cost, uh, the possibility of a tuition for an out-of-district placement that, that we see on the horizon, and I become um, concerned about that and, and, and operate very conservatively, and, and God bless the principals. They are very compliant. Um, they understand the situation, and like I said, we, we've come to expect it. Uh, but we're really operating our schools on like a four-month budget, an appropriation that's like a third of what it should be, and trying to get the things that we need. If we didn't have the support of parents' associations and other gifts that we receive from the community to help uh, bridge the gap for those remaining, I'll call it eight months, we'd really be in trouble. So I think I've exhausted what I think are my um, options available to avoid impacting the, the educational experience, the classroom experience, which is what led me to speaking to the committee a couple of weeks ago about the decision with, with the facilities personnel. Um, everybody's important. Everybody plays a role in what our students get here day in and day out, everyone. Um, but there are just, we've got to close the gap. And it's significant. You all see it. It's painful. It's distasteful. It's unfortunate. Uh, we have come so far, we've made such great strides educationally here. Um, this building is a huge testament to what this community thinks of public education in North Reading. And the thought of, of regressing is really um, very disconcerting to me. Uh, as it, I'm sure it is to everybody in this room, that's why everybody's here tonight. But I think um, it, would be, it would be disingenuous of me not to say that the, con the next conversation that I'm having with the school committee is likely to be identifying personnel right. to, uh, to close the gap. I just, I don't, see it, I don't see any way to avoid that. And I'm sorry to be vague, but the reason for that is, I think, twofold. Number one, I haven't spoken to these folks, and it's out of respect to them that that has to happen. And also, there could be identifying information um, in the, in the um, discussion around what 
what personnel might be affected, or at least that I would be recommending. And I have not had those conversations with those people. And, and I would want to have that before they read it in the paper or heard it on television. I understand. Thank Masi, you. Masi, in response to Brad Jones and Bruce Taft, I think 90% of the school districts in this state are going through the exact same exercise and the exact same problems as we are. Every one of those school districts is represented by a state representative and a state senator. It should be the absolute number one priority of every single one of them at the state house to do something about this, and they don't do it. So I don't know what the answer is. If everybody wants to call their state rep and the state senator, maybe they can get them inspired to do something <coughs> about it. But I would think collectively they would recognize the problem throughout the state and try to do something about it. Well, if I could say it trickles down, so it's also the responsibility of all of us in the community to there are elected officials and to let them know that that's a priority for us. I wanted to echo John's comment on how far we've come. Many, many of you probably haven't lived here 15, 20, 25 years, but there was about, it's probably 20 years ago, um, maybe a little less than that. North Riding was eighth from the bottom in the state in terms of per, per pupil spending. That's why I sit here because I was disgusted by that number. And I said, that this is ridiculous. How can this community be at the bottom of the state in poor people spending. We were thousands behind the state. Um, we are now, we're in the middle of the pack a little bit. And so when they look at us, state aid is like, they don't need state aid, they're rich. And that, that's, where, that's where we are right now. And that's why we don't get significant increase. It's even reflected in the MSBA reimbursement for the building and the exactly. construction of the buildings. We did get 49%, but you get a place like Somerville and Bill Rooker, they get 70, 65, 70, 70, 80 80%, percent. and so, we're getting 49%, so. This is Kathy's room. Michael, I think that um, you do yeoman's work. You have done tremendous work. You're awesome. Uh, you explain everything. You know exactly where to go with anybody's questions, and I think this should be the subject of the next Around the Schoolyard in the transcript. Laurie, what about the school committee? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's on Michael right now. That is our article. Uh, no, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this guy, Jerry and I have tried to catch him <laughs> Uh, we will throw out random questions about a random number, and he knows. It's scary. It's a little weird. It, 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 <laughs> it really weird. is. And you know, you think he's fooling you, but then you look, and the number is there. I think he's making it up, but he's not. He's really not. The, the hard part is that if you ask him how much change do we uh, does Sean Delaney have in his pocket, <laughs> he can answer. <laughs> Sean can't. Cliff, I wanted to address one more thing. One of the things that I've heard a couple times over the past few weeks is, why does the budget keep going up when the enrollment goes down? And that's true. Our enrollment has been going down between 30 and 50 students a year for the last few years. Probably. If you take, but number one, I'll start with the high school. The high school was built for 740 students. The last two years and next year, we'll have 800 plus students at the high school. The state wanted us to build a high school for 700 students, which would have been a disaster. Uh, Kathy Willis at the time fought to get it to 740 and we got it to 740. So the high school is overcrowded and as you see we need to add staff. But then if you look at the elementary and middle school, a couple of years ago we actually cut two teachers at the middle school because right. we had a significant drop in population. But you take the elementary schools and say you have, you lose 30 kids at the elementary level. That's K through five, that's six grades, three school. over three schools. So you might be losing one or two kids per class at the most. So we'll have a situation where we'll say, geez, 52 kids, do we really need three teachers in the first grade? Well, you're not gonna have a first grade of 26 and 26. I know there are people out there that say 26 and 26 is fine, it's not fine. And that's the issue. If, if we had a tremendous drop in population, we could- In enrollment. one area. In enrollment, right, in one area, then we could, you know, we could we reduce staff. Population. But th th I don't see that happening. And people say, oh, but the big developments are built Drive down any main drag in this town and see how many houses are being torn down and new big houses are going up, and you're not going to have uh, couples without kids buying those houses. They may buy them without kids, but they're going to have two and three kids two or three years down the line. And 
you know, this, this town is, in fact, I think Michael's projections show us starting to go up a little bit after a couple of years, especially at the elementary level. High school and middle school, we're gonna see some, you know, hopefully the high school within two or three years will actually be at that 740 level that we built it for. Um, and the middle school, I think, is where we're seeing that the most reduction and, in the next And the weeks. issue with the high school, when he says it's overcrowded, it's a staffing it's right. issue, not right. space issue. Space, we have plans. Space, Correct. everything's fine. Right. <laughs> so. Any other questions, comments? This is Amanda Pelly. Oh. Yes, ma'am. about what was um, the out of district costs and the it seems like in one of the in one of your FTE the school services the uh, elementary school services additional position I think you said that keeping eight children in in district was a savings of 350,000 how does that translate does that does that increase the costs in house for that savings, it seems like money well spent yes. if it's going to save that, but is it, it doesn't whittle away that 2.9, does it? No. How, how does that translate is the question. So. Uh, if you can answer that. Yeah, know. it's a good, it's a, it's a good question. So we, one of the things that we did last year when we were standing up here a year ago is we were actually advocating for a couple of key special education, uh, you, know, you know, positions to help that some of these key programs transition from elementary school to the middle school, from the middle school to the high school. And we, we did that in, in a lot of ways and we're advocating for those, for those positions, um, you know, to uh, actually as a cost saving measure to avoid um, what would have been more costly out of district placements if we were not able to meet the needs of these students in district. So yes, they, so that there is an, a, a cost to providing um, in, in adding those positions into the budget, but it, is far less than what would have been if we were to add the three fifty thousand dollars in the, the, to outplace those eight students outside the district, and we feel we're meeting those through those students' needs more more appropriately in house as well by keeping them in the programs. You know what the cost of the two positions was? It two positions we added. Do you know. What I want to say it was two uh, teaching positions and a para, and a paraprofessional uh, position. So. Um, it's about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So it's about two hundred thousand dollars less than what it could have been. To, to pay the out of out of district, mm -hmm. and I had another question for you, um, if you can answer the on the on your the new addition of the fifteen thousand as a result of the bid for the wastewater treatment. Yes. Did you already have uh, an amount for the? I don't know this the last year's budget or what? What's the difference? Is it in addition to what you already had factored in? It is. Yeah. So we actually believe it or not, we a couple of years ago we added a hundred and fifty thousand dollar line item to successively operate um, the wastewater treatment facility at this building. And I think over the last couple of years, we've done a very good job uh, working within that $150,000 allotment, and we've spent a little bit under each year as we closed out the fiscal year. So this year, as a, as a rebid year, we actually, uh, in the preliminary budget proposal, increased that allotment to 160, anticipating that there would be a little bit of, a, of an increase when we go back, when we went out to bid for both the engineer and the operator. The, the engineer, actually is a two-part uh, bid proposal. The engineer came in very similar to our cost this year, so we thought, you know, hopefully that, that would be the same case for the operator. Uh, but unfortunately it wasn't. The, op the cost to operate the plant uh, increased by about $25,000. So the 10,000 that we had originally increased had added in the preliminary budget proposal, which came out before the, 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 the due date of the bid, uh, wasn't sufficient, so we had to add the fifteen thousand dollars. So it's about twenty-five thousand dollar increase. So it's one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. So now we're up to one hundred seventy-five. Our initial projection was one hundred thousand dollars when we first started this. Correct. We first Correct. Started, so that's what we thought it was going to be. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item on Thank our you. Agenda. Is it a wave game? Yeah. 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 Recess. Yeah. Recess. Yeah. Recess. Want to recess for a minute? But don't let everybody get out of here. Oh, I, I no. misunderstood. <laughs> I would have been sitting at the. We'll take a five minute <laughs> recess. Five <laughs> minute recess. All right. Oh, that's why. Yeah. <laughs>
All right. Oh, wow. All right. Ellen marked me the other night. Yeah, threw us our next to the Oh, no, they didn't really have to work. So did the staff. Yes, I talked to him on the phone. Yes. The whole staff thing went away. See you on Facebook. I need to pick my No, you definitely do. I do. Hi. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Patrick, that was a tough job. Thank you. You were. Don't kid yourself. Thirty three. Six thirty six to seven oh nine. Well, can't have a How you doing? Hey, nice to meet you. Bye, Mrs. Levin. Yeah. What's I want? Little school, right? She's little school boy in the garden. Yeah. She's great. She's my niece. Okay. Who is going to pick it up and run with it with what feels most of us? Nobody. Nobody. They don't want to come in. They don't want to come in. What is there a performance bond in the uh, I think with, Matt just sent that, that they can yeah, get more so money than the oh, I don't know about that. You know, to do the job and... He's home with the boys, yeah, so... Yeah. Well, I want to get together. Administrator, thank you for coming. Yeah. I want to talk about right. Tom. Oh yeah. yeah. That's our Yeah. Oh, thank you. This custodian. Yeah. 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 Put my best man yeah. on. You did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I was, I was. That's what I did. Yeah. When I saw my clip email, I said, "This is one, you know, one of two things." Hi, yeah. Hi Julie. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Second. I don't know. Welcome. That's all it comes down to. The short side on their part, too, with, you know, people. You know, like when we reflect upon, you know, the potential of yeah. outsourcing for, you know, second shift I mean, custody. We need to, no, but we need to say how bad is it that we are willing to go this route. Like that's, that's the ultimate, you know, that's how bad it is. Yeah. Oh well. I have to be called to get two years of college. So I'm going to come to the church. Oh uh, yeah, really. Think about Reading has twice the population. Yeah, did you get everything we said? Yeah. I the yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you got but market baskets, stop and shop, walk, that whole walk. That's it, though. And they have, but they have 27,000 people for a 14. That's where I thought the same thing when I first yeah, yeah. heard those numbers. Oh, she has family there that she visits. Cindy? She's great. She's great. And. And call, Ann called you about taking the notes tonight. Right? You know, and, it, and it's unfortunate, like as a, as a parent of young children. Ann Lundell, you know, I'm looking you about at notes how can we not spend that money? I'll buy math books. I'll buy, like, whatever. But we we, we, we would just say it. We have to say, well, I'm glad there were people here, too. Let them start talking about this in the coffee shops. But very nice to meet you guys. Thank you. It's like your heart's part of you. It's so 
def- like I come in pumped and I leave so defeated. You like the accounts across the office? They agree. It's so, it's like you walk out wiped because it's just, and, and we've heard the same. Well, you two do this with pay, right? Yeah. The pay and the glory? Yeah. That's what my husband called my, well, you know. He said, he, 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 um, restricts me from depositing the check in just one account. I have to do it in multiple accounts. You know, and it's, it's a huge, you know, time commitment. Yeah. Just, with my kids, like and my daughter's and eight and thirteen. All right, Cliff. My, da- my daughter's at the point. We're ready. Like, will you ever get me to bed at night? That was weird. I know I'm petty. <laughs> I'm gonna have to talk. Say when I know more Spanish than the kids. I don't know how I got it. I didn't realize it's Spanish. No, I was wasn't running off this. Yeah. And then I hit shut down. It wasn't taking the password. Yeah. It's too early. I have problems. Don't turn it on. It's too early. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I think, Julie, you're not using the computer, are you? No, should I? I mean, I don't mind putting it up. Everybody's leaving. Yeah. Do you want... Yeah, thank you, Mike. Good night. I'll shut it down. Michael, thank you again. I'll talk to you. What you gave me. So, I was checking... Oh, Julie, take care. Nice to see you. This wasn't listed. Oh, the details. Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. I but I thought, like, you didn't want to... No, yep. I probably told her. I said, "See, I was glad you came." Yeah, I tried to do copy and paste, and it wouldn't. No, no, no. Oh, she did I didn't change any more. Yeah, because then that makes more sense. Okay. All right. Do you think I should or no, John? Do you think I should? I mean, it's kind of like. It's too late now. <laughs> oh. You don't have. Do you have to? Well, what do people have to reference? Does Dan have it? Does Dan have it? Dan, you have a copy of that, don't you? The evaluation? I mean, it looks like yeah. everyone is leaving. Well, Cliff needs to dang, dang, let's get this going. How are you? Hey, nice to see you guys. Good, you too. How you doing? What do you think? Like, just yeah. read some of the comments, or yeah, I wouldn't necessarily read to all of them. Like, I'm I'm not going to read all of them with John's. Yeah, you know, I might paraphrase okay. um, a majority of yeah. it. I mean, there's not a lot, so I don't mind. Yeah. Patrick? No, Nicholas. Um, I won't worry about it because he's the. You can look down at the paper and see what she's talking to. Right, yeah. And I don't think really anyone do else great. is going to be here. No, but there's just nothing to kind of reference for people to. Is everyone leaving? Hey, Maybe she'll I didn't ever Hey, nice to meet you. She just said you guys did a nice job. Is everyone leaving? Does a good job running the show. You're giving a check, right? Yeah. You'll be fine. What? You'll be fine. That's my problem. My problem. I didn't want it. It should be. That's right. Brief too, right? Exactly. I know. I'm just going to read the comments. I'm going to have to describe Chuck in detail. You do a good job. And and you know my. Willow needs you. Willow needs you. Well, that's a, yeah. Possible solution. My son is in Peabody till after nine. So my husband's like, I'll put her in her pajamas <laughs> if she falls asleep in the car. Yeah, that does not sound good. <laughs> and I, I, I explained she to wakes her up, you know, goes to school tired. The circuits in her car. Yeah. 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 That was that was good. Yeah. Yeah. It holds yeah. a memory. I'm glad there were people here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they need to. They need to start talking about about it. Exactly. Let them start talking about it. I think it's good. You're disconnected. (laughs) There's no problem. Oh, right. Right. No energy because you took the energy. Right, 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 right. But she was smart enough. She was smart enough. She shouldn't touch that. (laughs) Andy reminded me tonight. He and I met like seven years ago. He was on a plane. Uh, We were on a plane to Fort Myers. Really? He was sitting right next to me. (laughs) See, the meeting will come back to order. You got it. Yeah. Next item on our agenda is 
school committee self-evaluation. And Ms. Kopi and Ms. Embriano have uh, are members of the evaluation subcommittee and they will present the composite self-evaluation results and facilitate a discussion about the use of these results in goal setting workshop to be held in the summer. So I hope you've all had a chance to look over our yes. final self-evaluation results. We have a comparison from last year, 1516, to this year, 1617. I think I'll start by just kind of noting some. Um, Where's that? I, I put it. No, right there. Oh, it should be in your packet. I didn't. From Friday. Right here. Oh, okay. Thank you. I thought you were giving something. So, away. one question that um, we as a subcommittee. Um, kind of last year had some issues with, this year it seems to be creeping back up on us, is the adopting a mission statement. So only I think one of us might have put a not addressed. So I don't know if this is something going forward that we discuss as a committee to possibly remove because that has been done. Yeah, I, th I think already. that should be removed. Uh, we, the school Are you district. About school committee? Yeah, school district, mission right? Statement? Mission yeah. statement. Yeah. No. Yes. The school yes. committee would, why would we, yeah, we wouldn't have a different mission. No. Well, we might, we might, like our mission might be to undermine right. the superintendent. All of that, all of, <laughs> you know, that has been addressed <laughs> through NRPS 2021. So, you know, we've approved that, we've discussed that at length. So I don't know if this is something that needs to stay here. The reason I bring it up is that it affects the rating score. So it's not a true valid representation of whether we think we've done it or not. Yeah, probably ought to not be on next year. Right, right. We so did that, that was kind of what we wanted well, to we share just because there was an asterisk and we just wanted to kind of bring that to your attention. Um, in addition, there was um, a slight increase, I believe, in professional, um, no, a decrease for school committee professional development opportunities. Um, while many of us have gone through the charting the course, um, programs through MASK, um, we don't really see, well, I don't see myself doing a lot of additional professional development in this area. So I think that's why um, that continues to kind of stay mm -hmm. at a 2.6. I don't know if you want to share any individual thoughts on that. I'm as, I'm as developed as I'm ever going to be. <laughs> I'm underdeveloped. <laughs> no, I think I think we've talked about this before. Um, I think we do have um, we do have the new committee member okay. kit that was put together that you helped work that you worked on with Mr. Bernard. Um, you know, maybe maybe there could be more. I mean, if anybody wants to go to the uh, mask event Conference. at Cape Cod, that's open, available and it's paid for. Correct? It's just yes. We'll pay for that. Mm -hmm. you, know what, um, you know what we could do? I mean, I don't know if it makes sense. I don't know if any of us need to take any more time. But if you had a little regional professional development seminar, mm -hmm. where you mm -hmm. idea. brought in school committee members, yeah. say, mm -hmm. from Reading and maybe Andover and, mm -hmm. you know, contiguous sure. communities. That's a good, that'd be a good idea. And if brought we in a that. speaker or brought in somebody from MASC or somebody like that that would go over different topics. I know that, that MASC yeah. has regions. Right. You know, and they have kind of region mm -hmm. leaders. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen a lot in our yeah. vicinity. Yeah. Honestly, as far as professional, I mean, we don't really do anything. No. Um, I, I, I'm just thinking, too, if we did it locally, maybe you could rotate, like, you know, do it every three or four months, bring in a speaker, and then go from North Reading to Andover to Reading, so you're not traveling a great distance. And you know, The other thing is, you're not, not only, you know, bringing a speaker is good, but sometimes you might just have a, a round table. Right. You know, to discuss current That'd issues, key issues. Because yeah. the superintendents do it. We do. Right. They do it. Yep. Or like and strategies, that, you know, right. Right. programs, right. funding, well, you that know, sort not of thing. Necessarily sitting down and I think, think that's a great idea for you guys <laughs> next year. <laughs> no, no, not that we need, I mean, but it would, it would be interesting to see if, you know, you can get updated on some sure. things and then it's yeah. a few times tonight. I agree. I mean, I think, I think we can always do more. Mm -hmm. um, I think. Honestly, as someone who's been on here for 13 years, I don't look as much for professional development. That doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of things out there that would help me and help the committee as a whole. So, and not that there's any like uh, you know, 
panaceas out there, but somebody may come up with something that we hadn't thought of. Correct. Or that we just get stagnant. That's the problem with being here so long is you just kind of continue to do right. things the same way all the time. It, it, so actually, I, I think that uh, the professional development that you get by reading the listserv yeah. mm -hmm. is huge because there's more stuff on there and you see what other other districts are having problems with. You have questions from others that are asked that. And we're getting, you know, direct information from Desi. You know, Tracy Novak goes right. and blogs right. and, you know, records yeah, important really and you're getting And you, in the end, you get an answer. Yes. You, you have some sort of an outcome and an answer, and it gives you some direction. And I, I, I really think that's an extremely valuable source. It gives you... In addition to your own experiences, it gives you experiences that others are finding in the same kind of an environment that you're faced with. Yep. I just, um, I thought my leadership and governance said the marks were obviously averaged lower than what they were last year. No, they're about the same. No. Yeah. no, about the same. Do you think no, they're the same? Yeah. Yeah. No, when you total them up, really? not that anybody is statistically minded here, but. Lower. Yeah, if you total the average for the 16-17 period, it comes out to 76.4. Oh, okay. right. And and for the earlier period, it's 68.4. Right. Um, one. I'll have more on that later. <laughs> <laughs> so, one noted increase, actually two, was um, adequate allocations for professional development for staff. And I attribute my rating on that to the adoption of the new MAC program and the professional development that is ongoing for, you know, at least at the elementary level, I see and hear a lot about that. Um, so that's a definite improvement. I think that's been pretty low in past years. And also receiving feedback from public stakeholders. I did the same thing the first time, so. That went from a 3.0 to a 3.4. I see that, you know, that's a noted increase as well. One decrease that I want to call your attention to is under um, the educational program, specifically number 26, the educator evaluation system, negotiating and implementing it. Um, the question of can our administrators handle, you know, the current requirements involved in that evaluation system. So I think that's perhaps why that has dropped so significantly from a 3.4 to a 2.9 for this year. If anyone wants to share their thoughts or comments about that. I'm gonna guess whoever, I mean, I forget how I rank that, but obviously the drop is indicative of probably. I mean, you have it's, yours. It's been, it's been implemented. So right. it's got to be somebody's feeling that right. it's not, you know. Right, be, yeah. right. And just, I think that the questioning of, you know, the, the amount of people that our administrators have to, have to evaluate, is it, is it feasible? And I think, you know, that will determine its effectiveness overall. I think that's probably a fair statement. I mean, I gave it a four because I think it's been implemented, but, you know, in terms of, the ability of the administrators to handle the caseload that each has. And it's not only, is it only administrators or is it also other, is it just, there's other others that, it, that evaluate, right? No, only, only administrators. So principals, assistant principals? Principals, assistant principals. Superintendent? Um, spe special education assistant coordinators. Um, assistant superintendent, correct. PPS director. So how many people do we have that are evaluators? So you have five principals, two assistant principals would be seven. You would have two special education coordinators would be nine. Um, the assistant superintendent is 10, myself, director PPS, 12. So we have 12 people to evaluate approximately 250. I'm sorry, the digital learning. 13 uh, people to evaluate about 250 to 300 people. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't seem to be too efficient. That's a state right. thing. I mean, I mean, again, that doesn't seem to be an efficient way to run an airline, <laughs> never mind a school system. It, it sounds like fail. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't even thinking about Built that in. when I, when I, uh, when I evaluated that. But that's a really, 
Now, I know you're not doing everybody every year, right? Correct. But still. But in a full-blown, uh, this formative evaluation, summative evaluations. So how many people, so at the elementary level, no assistant principals, you have one principal, they're responsible for every teacher in that school? Correct. Now, there, there might be a few exceptions where the assistant superintendent takes on, say, either Patrick does evaluations in uh, physical education correct. and the arts. I'm talking about the core but courses. The core uh, classroom teachers, correct? Yeah. So we could have between 15 and 20, 25 people, depending on the size of the school. And it's, it's quite a cumbersome process. If we, you know, we, we have adopted a belief that we're not just checking boxes. We, mm -hmm. I think, have adopted a belief and have followed through with providing narrative feedback to people because that's where it's right. most valuable. Right. Um, so we're, we're, we're trying to give the process as much integrity, and I think we're doing that, but it has become uh, a significant amount of time. I understand the lower mark there, then. That's understandable. Just to clarify, you do evaluate everyone every year, just formative or summative? Right. Because they might be on a two with yeah. Right. Right. But sometimes we're on a two year plan and they're Correct. one year plan or three year, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, okay. Hey, I had a question on number 39. Are you guys, when you're signing the warrants, are you reviewing them and using due diligence? Are we, are we required to do that? Are we doing it? Uh, I, are we just signing them? Uh, I, I, I go through every single item. I know I can't sign them. I used to at least look through them, right. but I'm just well, curious. Absolutely. The right. One thing about I the system. I give a little mark because I'm not signing them anymore. So one, you guys are just signing them. No. One thing about the system that we're using, where we're doing it electronically, you get the, the, um, all of the backup. Yeah, you get the detail. That's sitting there, and you can go through that individually and look at every bit of it and then you go through the on DocuSign okay. and you you go see the same thing again but <clears throat> when you get it individually <clears throat> excuse me you can rotate the pages so you could read it yeah. uh, but by having it um, show up on your computer at a time that's convenient for you so you're not standing there looking at it. Right. You're not just hanging you over it. You rotate the pages. I'm finding, and I asked Michael about this, when I get the DocuSign things to sign, they come vertically and they should be horizontal because I have to, I look. Right. I, but if you go to the yeah, top of the page and hit view. Oh, you can rotate it? You can rotate it. Uh, yeah. Clockwise. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's learn. been a couple instances where I've asked Mike, I have you know, two. about like a, a different yeah, retirement. Yeah. Right. Why is this retirement can't, can't still here? I mean, can't do there that have in been instances right. where we've. But you can do it in those. Oh, and that's sep okay. In the ones that yeah, are Adobe sent to you in PDF. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's it, when DocuSign, you can't do it, but in the separate batch yeah. that she right. sends, you can't. There was do a lot of discussion about this on the listserv. Yes. And and Mike Gilbert is not 100% convinced that everything we're doing is right. But it is, right. Yes, it is. We've yeah, checked we it three different we did. times. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this system allows you to sit at leisure instead of hanging over the desk and right. trying to go through it while you're standing up uh, and, and, and in an awkward situation. You can really uh, dig down and look at what is there. I look at every one. I look at every one. Uh, and because it's, you can do it at home and it's... It's so convenient and, and so useful yeah. that everybody ought to be doing it that I, way. You know, we've taught, you've called me before. Yeah, I call Michael and I, like, I don't understand why have we, and then Michael says, well, that's a, we're, yeah. we're advanced payment for a tuition or it's a, Somebody, like, yeah, HVAC right. Stuff. Like there was an HVAC maintenance thing and I was like, whoa, that's really high. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's what we're supposed to be doing, right? Yes. So, yeah. right. Well, usually it's pretty boring yeah, though. Usually it's pretty boring to you know, $497 for uh, pencils or whatever. It's like <laughs> yeah. if you look at how others that show up on the listserv do theirs, uh, usually they they bring it to a meeting, right? And and they're they're just signing and yeah. and right. voting on it in unison. Exactly. And you have limited time. You're at the end of the meeting, and people are tired. Yeah. Just kind and of it's signed. just signing off right. on right. it. So and we used to always sign at the meeting years ago. Yeah. yeah. Really? Mm. Oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah, we signed at the meeting. So just a, a couple more statements that I want to kind of choose from our narratives that we provided. Um, one member sees a need to be more innovative in finding the means to fund the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. In addition, yes. um, 
one member would like to see more involvement <coughs> in the area of school improvement plans while we see them on a yearly basis at the end of the school year perhaps more involvement in the implementation of those school improvement plans during the school year i don't think we can i don't think we can be involved in implementing them can we not necessarily involved in the well, implementation, one of the things, but... I think one of the things that the committee had asked for, <coughs> and I think we've done it now two years, was the mid-year mid report. Update, yeah. yeah. And I think that was a way to try and just keep people informed as to where the, on the goals, progress. Yeah, I, uh, I think progress. I that several years I ago. I think you did, Mel. I think it came <coughs> So I think that was okay. the number was getting at. And I think that's pretty much all. I mean, for, for the most part, things stayed, you know, pretty closely to where they were in previous years. Anything uh, well, you want to bring up? Think of it, really. We should all be giving ourselves four in every category. Well, well I was going to speak on that. that. No, no. Yeah. Really? I, but this, I, I wrote this, and I have no need to suck up to anybody in this committee, because I'm very self-confident, and I don't really need the adulation. But um, I wrote, while it seems almost arrogant to give the committee exemplary scores in so many categories, I firmly believe it is deserved. We have a high-functioning committee and a productive, positive relationship with the administration. And I think in here, um, uh, I, in the years we have been doing the self-assessment, I have never rated the committee this high. It's an excellent committee. I think it's the best, this group this year is the best committee I've ever served on. And that's no slight against all the committees I've served on in the past. It's, I think it's the hardest working. Um, the subcommittees work really hard. I think we come prepared to these meetings. Nobody is, ever caught off guard as far as i can see and if we are caught off guard we have we really can answer the caught question up shut up. right exactly well speaking of that i uh, am into statistical things you know uh -oh. and i'm always looking for improvement yes so i total these up to see just how far off we were from previous years mm -hmm. and we have an 8.2 percent improvement that's very good and since I've been the chair during that. <laughs> Are you looking for a raise? <laughs> I just want to make a point Good here. Good point, Cliff. Yeah. Good point. That leadership is important. <laughs> in, in spite of Cliff, we went up 8.2%. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Just think what you would have done without <laughs> me. I, <laughs> wow, we would have. We would have had a 20% increase. <laughs> no, but I, I'm, ser I'm serious about that. Every member, and it's good to have... Um, a newer member in her second year, someone kind of in the middle, was this your sixth year or fifth year? Fourth. Fourth year, and then kind of the old people who've been here for probably way too long. But it's a great mix. It's people who represent different parts of the community with people who have kids in elementary and middle school, a high schooler soon to not be a high schooler, grandchildren, no kids at all and no attachment. <laughs> These two. Well, I have to agree with him, Ralph, with everything you say about to but it, it's really a great committee yeah. and we don't you know you we have differences of opinion we don't vote unanimously on everything but we don't hash out bad blood and whack each other around which is not necessary it's just not necessary to do that and I really appreciate that yeah, and, and that's the end of my speech but I think too that you know we've done a good job of getting the getting the job done Two hour meetings or two and a half hour Usually, meetings. Usually, yeah. I mean, there's no reason that we need to go beyond that. Um, I mean, tonight there was because we had a public hearing, yeah. but I think usually, and I think we have a good relationship, you know, with, with the administration, um, with Michael, with John, with Patrick. And I think town wide also. Town wide. You know, we serve on, you know, a lot of groups and well, committees I, within the town. I think too. that's almost as important as, you know, having the relationship with the administration as right. having it with the town. And, we have our moments, that's for sure. Yeah. But we still have a very collegial, collaborative, I think, relationship with the town. I, I, I see it. I see it in finance planning team, yeah, capital improvements. Part yeah. of that too, a really big part of that was the uh, secondary school building committee really pulled together mm. the members from the you know the yeah. board of selectmen, the finance, because a lot of the board of selectmen, and now of course Mike Gilberto has been very active. But right. you, you know you had. Um, you know, Mike Prisco and Sean Delaney were very, very active in, in that know, committee. Steve O'Leary. Yeah. yeah. And Bob Masseri, too, for that matter. So brought us all to, yeah. together. On I that. mean, I, should, I could say that, you know, 
And in terms of uh, interacting with the public, I sometimes lose my cool on uh, social media. I think Julie would confirm that. But oh. I, that try to, I try to just bitty. be informative on social media. There were a lot of questions about an issue we discussed tonight um, regarding the custodians. And I just try to inform. And I try to make people understand by presenting the facts. And sometimes when they don't read the facts and listen, I lose my cool a little I bit. I have had people ask me about you. <laughs> Yesterday I was at a christening and people were asking him. <laughs> <laughs> they think I need maybe some uh, help? No, no, no. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, that's and, that's... and I mean, that kind of brings up, you know, there's still, you know, a desire, at least on some, you know, of the other stakeholders, parents, um, to have that social media presence because I think they appreciate most, that. Yeah, most people I think are reasonable, but right. then the, the ones that sometimes push a little hard, get under my skin. Julie's a lot more calm than I am. Um, and, and Julie's smart. When she knows she might not be calm, Julie doesn't answer. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> respond a lot of times. <laughs> I'm not as smart as Julie The problem is. is, I think, the longer you're on the committee, the more you find yourself just status quo things. You know what I'm saying? That, so you're not really necessarily thinking out of the box and trying to come up with some yeah. really innovative things and you just year to year you say and I thank God the administration is moving forward on different things but uh, as a school committee member we, we don't we don't have a lot of initiatives do we I think that we would be a lot more innovative if we had more cash yeah, to work that's, with. That's yeah. true. Absolutely. Because I, it, we, we're stifled. We've pushed for a lot of things, Jerry. I mean, wow. we've pushed for that foreign language program. We, I mean, we, the administration Learning. came forward with the, yeah. the, uh, which, the uh, whatever that pay. Global Child. Global Child program. Yeah. We didn't come up with that, but Patrick and John and. and I remember and, asking Kathy once at one of these types of meetings, Kathy, if we identified the best school districts, you know, whether it be Lincoln Sudbury or Lexington, Brookline or uh, Dover Sherbonne or anything. What would we have to do to get? There's one answer. <laughs> well, money. you're gonna say money, yeah. obviously. But I'm just saying. But I, what would that money pay for? Would it be for enhanced curriculum? Would it be for additional? You know, it would be more know, teachers, enhanced curriculum, smaller class sizes, smaller class sizes more counselors, school. more more guidance counselors, mm -hmm. more school psychologists, more social and emotional programs. I think you pay for all those things. You're saying that you know how to spend the money if we exactly, have. Exactly, exactly. I think we, we all could do. be very innovative. You know, Cambridge, has, Cambridge spends like 20, or I think it's over $25,000 per student. Per student. Per student. Yeah. Imagine that, right. imagine being able to pay, spend 20, imagine what we no. could do with 25,000. No, can, can you imagine? That's 10,000 per student, that's, that's, that's It's 12,000 more than more. we're spending now. Almost double. That's 28, yeah. yeah. yeah almost, almost double. double. Yeah. 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 We're at and, I, and a half. I saw people shaking their head tonight in the audience, but not agreeing with me. This town is a top 15% town in the state in terms of per capita income. It's just not, I'm not making that up. I've done the research. We, it, we're a wealthy it, town. We're seen as a wealthy town. It doesn't like seem like it to us. <laughs> <laughs> to live here. Right. But it is a very nice town, you know. It's a very nice town. The taxes are high. But I always say, I look at... This is one of the safest towns in the state. This is the, you know, we have a good fire department. We have Ipswich River Park, people in other towns, they are so envious of us with that yeah. park. And we have park, we have, we have the new park here with, with the, the new turf, the new sod and, and the irrigation system. We have McGuire Field. We have, I, this town has more recreation than Little League facilities. The Little League facilities are hosting the state championship this year. There aren't a lot of towns that can do that kind of thing. And so. But our public safety, you're right, fire department, police department. Or I mean, we were ranked one of the, I think we were ranked like the 19th, 18th safest town in Massachusetts yeah. out of 351 yeah. cities and towns. So it's a little bit off the school committee, but I think, I think, it's, I think it's a pretty high functioning town. And I think most of the boards, school, the, the, all the boards in town and all the departments in town, school and town, help that. But it appears that our success, all the credit's being given to Michael Conley. Right. And it's not that really angered me tonight. Yeah. But it's <laughs> deserved. Uh, uh, I would say, uh, if I could give him a review, I think there's some questions about him on here. If I would like to go back and lower my grades. Other than that, like this financial and asset management, I'd like to go back and change all the fours that well, I have here. Good job, guys. A lot of work went into doing that. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. Oh. Thank you. 
And I think that moving forward, the committee, if it's these two or if it's somebody else, will look at, again, every year, maybe adding questions. or That's one of the things I always wonder, are there questions we could add? Mm -hmm. You know? Like, if I was one of you guys, one of the questions I would be have on there is something like, Mel talks too much. <laughs> one, two, three, four. That'd be like a one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I would ask if I was well, you guys have to deal with me. But other than that, good job. Over the past year, uh -oh. the chair has reached over several times <laughs> to hold the gavel <laughs> and thought about the impact it would make. <laughs> I'm teasing, Mel. Thank you, Mr. Bowers. But good job. It's really always good. good words and useful thoughts. Now you have your you're on you're on deck with the superintendent, one, right? I did a terrible job. Is that next week, John? May 1st. Oh, May 1st. Yeah. I won't be here. But. All right. Motion to adjourn. No, 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 no. <laughs> no we gifts. have no gifts. minutes. We have gifts. Uh, no budget update. We have gifts. And no staffing issues. But we do have bids and donations. And if someone would be kind enough to offer um, some motions on these, I would appreciate it. Sure. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude the total donation of $20 from an anonymous high school parent to benefit the North Reading High School track team. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a total donation of $50 for Mr. and Mrs. John Spiney to benefit the North Reading High School track team. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a total donation of $500 from the Reading Cooperative Bank to support costs associated with the May 18th school committee presentation by Dr. Ruth Pody on adolescent brain development. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Wow. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of 97 laser lights valued at $2,910 for district-wide drama performances from Walmart. A second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. But can I ask a question? John, do you know any more about that? That's pretty, is that for the auditorium, is that for the Performing Arts Center, do you know? Or? I'm sorry, I don't. You don't? I, 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 so that's would, all I know is it's for okay, that department. It would be for the Performing Arts Center. It could benefit all the production. So it just adds, adds to the lighting system that uh, we have now. Yeah, it's a little device. They show, I, had, I they sent me a picture. It's a little device that just kind of adds some of those. Oh, so laser, okay. Uh, we checked with Alice and Kane and Carla and they very much wanted them. Oh, oh excellent. Great. Great. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a total donation of $4,000 from the Hornet Hall of Fame for the high school, middle school field project. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very much. Yes. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a total donation of $4,500 from the North Reading High School Hockey Boosters to offset the cost of winter 2017 ice time. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. It's nine, nine, over $9,000. Thank yeah, you we, all very much yeah. for your <laughs> contributions. Uh, subcommittee updates. Evaluation subcommittee met on March 29th. No, no big updates. We compiled our results and discussed the upcoming superintendent evaluation, so. Yep. Okay. Finance planning team met on uh, April 4th. Mr. Benazi, do you want to? I, I think, think we incorporated that? most of what we talked about into tonight's right meeting. It was mostly budget. We got down to that number with whatever the number is, $338,000. Correct. There was some discussion in spite of the weather and the weather that we had last week that this still might potentially be some money left over from snow and ice reserves. So I don't know if that's been exhausted or not because we, we had the, another storm. Uh, yeah. And uh, what else, John? Uh, Did they? There was indication that there was optimism that there would still be a reserve amount 
from that, yeah. you, despite that sad but Friday night Saturday night. Give us a, a little <coughs> chunk of money to cut it's the it. deficit down. A Plus, what did so. Mike? Didn't the state go up ten dollars per it from twenty to thirty? Wasn't it at twenty? It yeah, was, it was at, at twenty. It was at twenty, and they went to thirty. Proposal was to go to for the house. 30, so that's yeah, another so twenty-six thousand. Right. Yeah, that, that can and there was also a discussion about possible, you know, some sort of down payment on the foundation budget. I, I'm not sure. I, I didn't have a chance towards to really. I thought was, was it towards special toward, ed and health towards, insurance? Toward health insurance and special education costs and transportation. I don't really understand what that could mean. Okay. Going forward, but I know that it went from twenty to thirty dollars. Tracy Novak, I bet will have a good. Um, she'll have a good review tomorrow of the. Buy I'll send it to you. Yes, yeah. she usually to does a good job of. You said something. Yes, talk much but I, haven't, about, but I haven't read it. I have a meeting on Thursday with the. I mean, there was an executive summary based on the, the, the Ways and Means Committee, that you know, again, but that's not finally approved. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's we also good. learned, I think, that the town's deficit was down to like eighty-eight or ninety thousand. Yes. Ninety-one, I think. But so last night, um, they were still talking about potentially some more budget items being added, so that that deficit could potentially, I think, go up. That's correct. The health insurance, I think, they're pretty much locked in, and you know, the, the cross close. rate is going to be about two and a half percent. So that's factored in already into this number. Yeah. It's already in here. I have, I, have a, I have a little bit of late breaking information on that. As as recent as tonight, the town administrator administrator spoke to me that. Um, he received some information today. They're hoping for an insurance advisory committee that meeting this week. The one last Thursday was postponed. Um, so he's hoping to be able to speak more definitively about what the increase will be, hold, trying to hold it at uh, two and a half percent. And the last, I think there was some discussion too about the bathroom article on the warrant. Um, yes. Yeah, being, yeah. being on the town warrant Correct. for the town meeting, obviously. Mm -hmm. so. Why well, well, you guys mentioned the $338,000 deficit, but that doesn't, so that's taking out the new teacher at the high school, taking out the correct K through five, and I personally don't support taking. It's I guess taking out those four yeah. and right. IPS. Our budget is probably mm -hmm. more. The like five hundred thousand because we're all yeah. in agreement. But, right. I think I think it was pretty clearly conveyed at the finance planning team meeting that that's the budget the committee is entertaining. And, and, and still, the, the thing was, I mean, we, we argued on, on the recommended budget, not the local right. Budget. Okay, so that's that's, I that's the point. We argued making, yeah. at the finance planning team on right. that budget, so we set that number. Okay. And there's a meeting on the 24th. The 24th. So that's the a morning. We have the finance planning team in the morning, your workshop in the afternoon. Right. So yes. hopefully there'll be some. So we may have some further uh, information yeah. then. But it, it's a relatively bleak uh, picture and with very little chance for pockets of money to yeah. show up. Right. It's not it's not, town, not very town. much that's, uh, that's loose. Worse than I've seen in the past. At this stage of the game, mm. probably. Yeah. 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 All right, and uh, athletic facilities subcommittee. That's simple. We, um, the committee, unanimously approved moving forward to get bids on three options for mm -hmm. the um, Kenny Field project. One is restrooms only. One is restrooms with a um, concrete pad and utilities connections for uh, a future concession stand, and one would be for restroom concession stand uh, combined building, combined facility. And that commits us to nothing, but the CBI said they would do all three of those well within the budget of the $50,000 that was approved at town meeting. So Michael Gilberto today, you know, tonight told me that it's gonna be a, you know, a race to the wire, but at some, at some point, we may have to have. Oh no! Actually, we probably do this at the at the meeting at the meeting before town meeting. We'll have to make a recommendation. The AFC, the athletic facilities committee, will have to have a meeting to recommend what they want to go forward with to the to the selectmen. Yeah, so we're hoping we can get bids. Obviously, yeah, when are you expecting? He's, he's hoping to get bids back mid-May. Yeah, we did. We did. Um, working with Brad Jones, um, we have requested that we reduce the number of fixtures to ten. Five in each bathroom, and we have the gotten preliminary. Go from eight to five. Right, the women will go from eight to five. We've gotten a preliminary sign that that is going to be okay. So the bids are going to go out asking for ten. However, on the bid, it will say if the state does not approve this, and that's going to be at the end of April. The state is going to vote officially on that. We're going to ask if the bid's going to have to be on thirteen rather than ten. The difference between the eight and the five could potentially save us what forty-five. They're talking about forty-five, fifty thousand, but he also talked about. Um, 
There could be other savings in site preparation because it's a smaller building. We wouldn't need a new fence. We wouldn't need a new gate. They wouldn't have to change some of the things at the site. They so, actually liked the design better. Yeah, and the design looked better. It was a square, almost a square building mm. versus kind of an L-shaped yeah. thing from before. So um, we'll have those bids, and then we'll have to, the AFC will have to make a recommendation. And that's, that's it. Yeah. A uh, subcommittee schedule is finance planning team on April 24th, May 15th. This is the conference room, athletics subcommittee, April 25th at 1230 in the afternoon, the superintendent's conference room, administrative. I have nothing additional tonight, Mr. Chairman. No correspondence, future business, uh, April 24th. Uh, uh, we are at 330, we have a fiscal year 2018 budget workshop in the superintendent's Call conference room. April 26th at 7.30 p.m. Uh, uh, committee so meeting uh, related to committee. our budget. I'm going to call in for that from Italy. Uh, Six hours difference. I'm going to call in just for the fun of it. Yes, <laughs> There, yeah. If you could hold May 3rd as a possible move to, if that meeting, that meeting may be delayed till the 3rd at the Finance Committee's request. Yeah, they, I <coughs> talked to Ab Abby and she, she definitely wants us to come when the budget is final, so if there's a chance that not evening if we okay. haven't taken action yet, and she'd prefer we come on May 3rd. I think a lot depends on how the workshop goes on the 24th. Yeah, so that's it's just a hold, I guess. Right. Yeah. That so meeting on the 26th may not be on. I have a question. Do we all go to that we can. meeting? Yeah, is that no, what we've done? I don't recall has. attending that, but. I, I pretty much go every year. And, um, I yeah, I, I, it typically hasn't been a majority of the committee, yeah. so it hasn't been a posted meeting oh, for the I school see. committee we we might but if, if, yeah, we if might people if you think yeah. that might happen let me know and yeah, maybe we should all go just to why don't i do it just in if case it's may 3rd i can go i'll be back be so. day, you all go. Yeah. oh yeah cliff will be you'll be done why don't why don't i post it in the event that i'm working in the dock that night <laughs> may 2nd's the election right Wait, what day of the week is that it's a wednesday wednesday, wednesday. it's a dark day uh, may 1st uh 6:30 is a regular meeting my last, right here in the distance learning lab. Last meeting. Last meeting. And May 15th at 6.30, regular meeting in the distance learning lab. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.